Hilbert? Present. Patty Adam? Shinwar Mai? Mikhail Pauline Norman? Present. Willie Gilbert? Yeah, boy. Here. Really approving. No. And I'll apologize. Uh, my error on the agenda is this at 6 o'clock. Uh, and so I don't know if that's going to confuse any of the ones that are coming in or if they're just late. But uh, that was an error. It is what it is. I don't see any citizens to be heard. Somebody's mic is off. Is that? Oh, that's mine. All of ours are. Not mine's on. I have mine. Now we're on. Okay. Thanks, Nate. <laughs> um, I don't know. We can't. Can we do anything with the annual report? Probably not. Has everybody? Have you had a chance to kind of look at the annual report? So maybe we just move on to the new business since we don't have any other items that we can vote on. And I would guess that, I would hope in a couple of minutes, someone, I mean, usually people come in kind of a few right. minutes late, so. And well, the streets no, are terrible. They are horrible. Yeah. Very, they're very it, narrow. <laughs> there was a huge crash over on Main in Fargo. And the front yeah. end of this car was just mangled. And oh, so, you know, it's just crazy. Um, if we go on to the new business, Deb, do you want to? I can if you'd like me to. Sure, that would be great. Okay. Well, here, I'll pass. <laughs> I gave this to you. I'll pass. If you want to pass one to Nate. There you go. So I, I just wanted to bring this to your attention and... Um, Bring it for discussion and possibly some recommendations to bring to city council um, this i asked to have this put on the agenda for the committee um, it regards an incident of alleged housing discrimination and i'm just sharing with you an, a news article that came out on january 16th re, um, related to the incident and so <clears throat> i'll start i can just give you a little background information and so um, i happen to see this in the news and uh, I'm new to City Council, so I wanted to find out what our role and responsibility uh, in responding to incidents of housing discrimination are. And so at the time, I contacted our mayor and our city manager, and then um, the city manager, Chris Volkers, actually set up a meeting with um, herself, uh, John Shockley, our city attorney, and Christy Lashevsky, our community development director, and we had a discussion about again the you know the responsibility or the roles um, of the city of Moorhead. And um, just to share with the committee, so we as we if there are cases of housing discrimination that's not something that the city regulates that we are not the investigative body so um, the appropriate investigative bodies would be at the state or the federal level however we do have our life our rental licensing program um, but that's not something that is a part of that it mostly deals with issues related to crime and safety so things like fire inspections um, but we did have a good discussion about what things we could do because um, we also discussed that the City Council in 2017 passed a resolution, an inclusive community resolution, um, um, uh, making, maintaining our commitment to being in a welcoming and inclusive community for all. And so um, we wanted to make sure that we were exploring ways in which we could really abide by that, really maintain the thing, the, the, um, you know the commitment that we'd made to our community and so um, we talked about ways that we might provide some services some resources for in this case the person who came forward and so um, Chrissy Lashevsky was actually very helpful and gave me a list of several resources because the person who came forward actually she had contacted the federal government but hadn't been aware of the um, the 
action that she could take at the state level. And so Christy provided me with some um, information that I could share with the person in case she wanted to tap into some resources and also um, to find out what action she could take at the state level. Um, and then we also talked about what things we might do to help in the future to prevent something like this happening in our community and also how we might work to reach out to this particular landlord to educate him about federal and state policies um, prohibiting housing discrimination and so um, I wanted to bring it up for discussion and in our conversation in this meeting um, one of the things or we talked about a couple of different things one of them would be that we could perhaps recommend that the city council have um, Chrissy Lashevsky, our, our community development director, um, reach out to the landlord that we could have a letter put together that um, reiterates the city's commitment to being an inclusive community, to remind the landlord of relevant state and federal policies prohibiting discrimination, prohibiting housing discrimination, um, and to provide resources to help educate and um, ensure that he will be in compliance in the future. Um, we might also consider other, other possibilities, again, if we were looking to find ways that we can help in the future, that we could um, find out whether or not there are places on our webpage where we could share those resources. So if someone comes forward and they want to find out if they've experienced housing discrimination and they want to find out who they need to contact, that perhaps we could make that information more readily available. Um, we also currently have training for landlords for other things and we could ask to have something like this be included in future trainings that just that there's resources provided to landlords to remind them again about the city's commitment to being an inclusive community and about um, relevant state and federal policies and so I wanted to bring that forward for a discussion and um, see if the committee wishes to make a recommendation to the council um, in terms of any particular action. I mean, I think we should, I think having a letter prepared and definitely providing that gentleman with some information would be a great start. Um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Did, does our website, doesn't it have a, a link on there to where a person would go? Um, it has information on fair housing and it probably does have a link to the, the Minnesota Human Rights Department. Yeah. yeah. I thought it did because when I was sure looking on there, it does. I think it does okay. say, you know, if you experience a discrimination thing, you can go here, and I, yeah. I think it sends you right to the state. Okay. But I don't. That's probably all. I don't know what other kind of information we could do, but mm -hmm. I just think it's you guys saw that. And Joshua, do you know if they currently in the trainings that they have for landlords, do they have anything like that that's provided to them? I don't know. Okay. I'm not sure. Like we have a rental and she had to do classes yeah mm -hmm. in fact we just had one coming up so yeah, yeah. I don't remember well, mm -hmm. years ago but I don't remember I don't think they have to get like I mean do they have to get recertified I know she has to do an inspection every no year, it's just but, once I believe but, yeah um, I think you only have to go through the training once right the crime-free multifamily housing training yes, yes. yep mm-hmm So I, I don't know, like, when we recertify, and maybe it's such a thing like we could put, when you get the letter saying you need to have an inspection, I mean, maybe we could put pamphlets or some more information just kind of reminding them that mm -hmm. this is a state, you know, every year. Because, I mean, right. if you're a landlord for right. numerous years, you're not going to remember that training. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a pamphlet or something we could put in there as kind of a reminder. I don't mm -hmm. know. HUD and uh, Minnesota Department of Human Rights, they have some good handout materials right. as far as housing discrimination goes, so I'm sure we could get something. Uh, that might be something that you'd, you know, you'd be in touch with the landlord every year. Mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. That's just kind of a reminder, um, just making that up. Right. Like mm -hmm. But if they're, not, if they're not required to keep taking classes, that might be at least something that they'll look at as a reminder. So. Our rec perhaps that could be part of the recommendation, like there could be one recommendation to have a letter sent to this particular landlord, but also a second could be to have them explore other um, 
what material is currently provided to landlords and what might we do to make the information more readily available right mm -hmm. it appears this woman does want to make a formal discrimination complaint so yeah. maybe we could let her know that government's back in business and uh, that she could do that and I actually did have a, a, a pretty, um, I had, had a phone conversation with her. So I reached out to her, even though she, she actually didn't contact the city, but I wanted to make sure that, um, that she knew that we were aware of the situation and let her know what her resources were. And so that's where, as I said, um, uh, Christy Lashevsky gave me, you know, a couple of good resources. And so I contacted her and gave her that information, emailed it to her, and talked to her about it on the phone just to let her know that, you know, um, that there were other resources for her besides just the looking at the federal level, too, and even some that might help her. So Northwest Legal Services was one of the resources that we provided as, um, a, a, you know, one that she might want to tap into as well. And just to let her, I just wanted to thank her for coming forward and that it's you know brave of her to to come forward and it's important that we know about these things too and maybe in addition to having like the acts if there's a link on our website if you were discriminated against but maybe you're thinking like having information about what their requirements are you know mm -hmm. what landlords need to be aware of have i don't know yeah. if there's some way we can have a right information for them yeah it sounds like i would think both, both of those be, right yeah. i don't think there's anything on there for right because ideally the better we educate our landlords the less likely it is that things like that will happen i mean it, it can't obviously we can't you know um we can't guarantee that but i i would hope that that that's a good step is is just making sure that they're well aware of the of the um of you know of current policies right because mm -hmm. it might not have been a thing back then. i mean we don't know you would need to reach out and find out if it's covered in landlord training i think so i think that yeah. would be really helpful yeah to find out what's currently provided yeah So where do we go from here? I mean, we can't really make any. Yeah, I apologize obviously. if this is my error uh, with the six o'clock thing. I well, I don't know if it's that or not, but. But when you sent um, the invite out to it or the email, it said five o'clock on that human resource that always goes out. So I, or human resource, you know. When it, <laughs> yeah, not human resources. Um, it's just one of those days. It is one of those days. <laughs> you know. It's, yeah. it's, I. And who knows, they're probably, if there was an accident on me, and they're probably all sticking. Mm -hmm. I mean, as far as I understand, the choice is wait, see if at least one more shows, or, or punt it till next time. Hello. How was your ride in? <laughs> was it? We were just discussing that issue there. Yeah, I can pass another copy down too. Let's see. We were just discussing some um, ideas or maybe recommendations that we can do mm -hmm. I'll let Deb summarize them 
I don't know, did you see that in the news? No. Um, if it's not uh, baby first or... <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. The kids, the kids own every TV. It's like the minute they change rooms, it has to be on. Mm -hmm. um, so, so this is quite interesting because I own a rental property and I'm <laughs> curious. Uh, do they, where do, who do they report these incidents to? So it actually, and that was part, well, let me, I'll back up a little bit too. It, so yeah, that's, um, when I first uh, saw this in the news, I, I contacted our, our city manager, Chris Volkers, and our, and our mayor, and then um, Chris ended up, we had a meeting with um, our city manager and um, our community development director and looked at our current policies and actually we so the city is not the investigative body so and not the regulatory body so we wouldn't um, if there are our incidents of housing discrimination that is handled at the state and federal level and so on the other hand though we do provide rental licenses and there are some things where clearly we're you know we're um, we are in contact with landlords and so um, we tried to explore some ways that we could make sure that we are really maintaining our commitment to being a welcoming and inclusive community and so um, what are some of the things that we could do to educate people if they are um, if they do experience housing discrimination and also what could we do to educate landlords to make sure that they are aware of federal state and state policies uh, prohibiting housing discrimination and um, that they do you know that they are in compliance and so um, so yeah so we wouldn't regulate it um, and, but we and, and in fact our current our and you probably know this if you're a landlord the the um, rental registration to be or to be you know to get have a rental license it's really has more to do with safety and so you know um, they have a fire inspection so it's crime and safety related so so it would really kind of be beyond the scope and we wouldn't be able to we um, to investigate cases but if it was brought to our attention then I think that that's you know I think that's important for us to know and again look at ways that we could prevent things like that from happening in our community so one of the things that I um, was asking the Commission is if they would like to recommend to the City Council that they um, empower or, or that they they request that the um, that our community development director put together a letter for this particular landlord so in my meeting this is one of the things that she mentioned she could possibly do is that to send a letter to this landlord um, reiterating Moorhead's commitment to being in an inclusive community and um, reminding the landlord about state and federal policy and then providing some resources some links so that they could um, find out more and um, about how you know about the current policies and hopefully not do something like that in the future and then I so that would be one one thing I was asking is would we like to make that as a recommendation that that we have Christy reach out to this particular landlord with something along those lines and then the other would be would we want to look into what we currently provide in terms of resources so looking at our training for landlords do we provide information like that could that be included in the training to make sure that we have you know a pamphlet or things on the web page that let them know about state and federal policy and you know provide um, links to information about that and might we also want to look at how we could better provide information for people um, who may be who may have experienced housing discrimination so so looking at ways we could address both of those populations the folks who may have experienced it but I think ideally working with the landlords first you know to make sure that they um, are aware and and are in compliance Being proactive yes yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sure she's not the only one no I, I think because she's a WDAY employee she may have felt more compelled to come forward right how long ago did you do your training for your have you had See, your it's a, it's long a Fargo, Fargo property and oh, so that would be very different. The they, don't have, they don't have the same requirements. No, they like, do when you not. Talk about that. I'm just like, yeah. Would have been great. I, I mean, I went to the police station and fire when I asked, and they're like, we don't have any of those resources. I'm like, mm. Minnesota is 
they have, oh, I mean, it's a process and yeah. more than to get it, to, get, um, to become a landlord. I mean, yeah, North Dakota is good. nothing. Yeah, <laughs> nothing. I find a way to do background check. No. And I was like, how do, without doing anything, like, you can yeah. get references, you can get references on it. But, I mean, they're likely just going to put some one of their landlords they got along with and, no, it's not. I feel like it's, louder than usual but um, but I, I think I think the resources that you were talking about are great um, I, I think we should definitely take that approach um, if the rest of the members agree um, yeah. and you know on the flip side on the other side maybe we can somehow um, share some of the resources that landlords have as well uh, I mean it's it's not something that we would uh, focus on too much, but I think it'd still be good for landlords to know what resources they have and right. remind them as well. Right. Right. And we kind of visited about that maybe. Yeah. Maybe putting some links or some information on our website or, um, I know, in, I don't know in Fargo if they do that, but every year we get a letter saying it's time for your inspection, you have to get this done, and mm -hmm. maybe that's where we throw in a little right. here, and by the way, don't discriminate. I mean, just, yeah. it, just remind them. Yeah. Right, because it might be somebody who took classes years ago. Yeah, and it right. maybe wasn't in there at the time. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll just say too. So I mentioned, you know, there was the two separate things that the issue with the resolution. So this was, you know, the I was really pleased that the city passed this resolution back in 2017, and you know, of this commitment to being a, a welcoming and inclusive community, but. You, ha you know, it's very nice to have a resolution, but it, if we're not doing things when there actually is issues that are, uh, you know, that are counter to that resolution, then um, it really just seems disingenuous. And so to make sure that we really, you know, and, and we, you know, um, that we really stand by the kind of community that we want to be. And so even though this isn't something that we have a lot of um, regulatory power over but we should do whatever we can do to try to make sure that right. you know that we really stand by that commitment I, I I agree especially being proactive like yeah yeah so how do we go about making a recommendation to the council do we write something up or do we just come in or I don't know. I'm pretty new to this. I Me think too. yes, yes. I I think if we if you put together a resolution, then you'd vote on it. To, you know, to, or put together a recommendation okay. that you vote on, then it could go on the agenda, and either you could come and present on it, or I could. I'll be there, obviously. So you know, we could both talk about it. And I think it would be good to have the the you're the chair of the com, of the commission. So I think it would be good to have you there for. To speak on it too. I'm looking at you because you're, I, the, you're the putter together guy. I, I can absolutely put okay. together whatever you like. <laughs> That'd be great. I just don't know all the rules that go around it. Mm. So if we put together um, put together a list of what we're going to recommend, then we could review that and vote mm -hmm. on it next week or next month. Or even I don't know. Can you? If I make a motion, can you vote on it? Or do you not have a? Do you have a quorum to vote on it? Yep, there's a quorum right okay. now. Okay. Yep. The, the recommendations that I wrote down that we had talked about was a letter to the landlord uh, from community development manager um, with information, <clears throat> um, working to make information available to the landlords, possibly through um, stuffing letters at the annual. Mm -hmm. um, what are those things that go out? Recertifications I think annually? Yeah, they're, they're letters saying that you need to have your inspection done, so I think it's re renewal okay. of, your, um, of your license. Mm -hmm. Um, make sure we have a link on the website, which I think we do, but we can double check and maybe add additional resources there. Right, because I think it's just for people who have been have been discriminated against. Mm -hmm. And then also to to be sure that it's covered in current landlord training. Did I miss any of the? Yeah, no, I think, or or in terms of if somebody come, did you include? And I could, I could, I don't mind making these in separate motions too. But one um, one aspect would be for. People who may have experienced it, making making the information more, re seeing what information we provide, and if we could make it more readily available for people who have who may have experienced housing discrimination. So, like looking on our web page to see. But you mentioned that you think we have a we do. Yeah, I'm almost okay. certain we, we have a link yeah. to, to Minnesota. Okay. 
Which is who they should be filing a complaint right. with if they yep. experience housing okay. discrimination. Yep. I don't know what other okay. information. Yeah. Well, the other option, it was uh, put in your packet, uh, the draft uh, statement slash press release, mm -hmm. talking about resources for people who experienced discrimination. Yeah. I didn't read that. It is the last page. Okay. Mm hmm And I, I, I don't know if that would go to, you yeah. know, educating the citizenry that, right. hey, you have some rights. Right. And so would this be sent out? So this is just a memo, right? Yep, just yeah. the bottom half uh, where it says Human Rights Commission draft mm -hmm. statement slash press release. That could be yeah. um, sent out as an e-notification. Yeah. And, um, mm -hmm. I think that's, that's mm -hmm. good. Yep. I like that. So I I can try. I if you'd like I'll I'll make a motion. Um, so one motion that I'll make will be that that the committee recommends that the city council um, have Christy Lashevsky, the community development director, draft a letter to the landlord involved in the um, incident referred to in the release, so mm -hmm. in, in this incident, um, reiterating Moorhead's commitment to being an inclusive community and reminding the landlord of relevant state and federal laws prohibiting housing discrimination and providing resources, um, explaining policies regarding um, housing discrimination and compliance. How's it? Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> Opposed? The motion is passed. I'm not going to try Great. to reiterate that. Sure. And then I guess my second motion, I think you have the details about this, Josh, but I just that the, that um, I, uh, I move that the um, Human Rights Commission recommend to the City Council that um, city staff, they, that they have city staff review current training and resources for landlord um, to see where we might better provide or, um, information about state and federal um, state and federal laws prohibiting housing discrimination and resources to help with compliance. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. The motion is passed. Do we need to um, make a motion to approve this press release? If you like. I think so. I think it looks, mm -hmm. I think that'd be great. Does anybody want to make a motion? I'm on a roll here. I, Go ahead I move. <laughs> I move um, to approve the press release um, prepared by Joshua Huffman. I will say it was prepared by Christy Lyshevsky and Lisa Bode, I believe. Okay. I believe they worked together to get that. Oh, included in our agenda items. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great. I don't know if I can. So are we approving the distribution of it as well? Um. Improve the just yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yes. I'll Adoption accept that as friendly amendment. <laughs> yes. Distribution. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'd second that. All those in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion is passed. All right. Now we can go back up to the top. <laughs> <laughs> um, approval of the, if you guys have a chance to review the um, Human Rights Commission meeting agenda for February 20th, 2019. I'm going to look those over. As we mentioned before, it says 6 o'clock, but it should have been 5, so he's has probably already taken care of that. Anybody else have any? In your minutes, I know, I just noticed one thing. I know Cassie, uh, you had a speaker, Cassie Wiest, and it says Wiston. I don't know. With guest speakers, Kara oh, Glow. Oh, annual report. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm sorry, I'm on the minutes, no, sorry. I'm like, eh. my, my, sorry about that. I'm like, well, that was a long time ago. <laughs> Sorry, I was on the approval of the um, of the agenda in the minutes. Yep. I don't. I just happened to notice that. But. Oh, that's right. That's it. Yeah. I move to approve the. Agenda and minutes. Mm -hmm. Do I have a second? Aye. Aye. Great. Oh, did somebody second that one? I did. Sir, why not? Okay. All those in favor, we kind of did that. Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the um, minutes and the agenda for the human rights meeting. The agenda for the meeting of February 20th, 2019 is approved and the minutes for the January 16th, 2019 um, City of Moorhead Human Rights Commission are approved. Right. Then we need to talk about annual nominations and elections of officers. thoughts you're doing a wonderful job thanks I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> winging it on a day-to-day -day basis um, I don't remember do we just have the chair and a vice chair yep. oh. if anybody else wants to do it they certainly can <laughs> who's your current who's the current vice chair um Willard. Willard. okay I thought they were lifetime uh, appointees <laughs> I don't watch it um yeah no I don't I don't have a problem doing it and I don't know do we vote on it now or do we vote on it next time I, I feel like we talked about it and then we voted on it at the next meeting but or do I don't remember how we, we, we discussed it last meeting no I mean last time we did our they're to be elected in February. Okay. I believe. I don't know how, if anybody else wants to be, you know, if we want to nominate a vice chair as well, or somebody wants to volunteer, or anybody have any thoughts? I don't care to do it. I feel like with my work schedule, I wouldn't be consistent. I mean, I'd love to do it, but the consistency we just wouldn't be there and I don't think that would be fair I already have somebody asking uh, a client asking if I can go out there mid-April and I just want to say no no I see wants to do that or I don't know to be honest I think that'd be fair leave it vacant for now yeah yeah I don't, we don't elect until February. Or no, mm. it is February. February. Mm -hmm. Mid-March then. Well, he can always decline once he's True. in it. Mm -hmm. well, I would move that we re-elect Mikhail and Willard to be chair and vice chair for this year. We need a second, right? <laughs> I'll second. Um, 
Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, so we have elected me as chair and Willard as vice chair, unless he decides he doesn't want to. He, I, think I, I think he only had to stand in one time, so it was pretty. Yeah, I think the awards. I should have made him come when I had laryngitis and had to talk to him. <laughs> also, that was unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't. Okay, so we're good with that. Um, consider next item on the agenda is consider approve 2018 annual report. So you said the Cassie Wiston is. It's yeah. There's it's just W I S T E. Okay. There's no N. Thank you. I'll make that correction. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Once yearly, um, the council is supposed to provide a annual report to the city council by March 15th. Okay. I don't think we did, well, we weren't in it for a year last year. Well, there was one put together last did year. We? Yep. Wow. Yep. And that just gets submitted to them? We don't have to present it or anything? I don't believe so, yeah. I think it's I just don't remember submitted having to them. To I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. And I put this together and I can tell you, uh, just listed the meetings that took place, um, any membership changes, listed the guest speakers that uh, presented at meetings, uh, and then just some highlights of the activities uh, that the Rights Commission took part of. Mm -hmm. Do we currently have vacancies on the committee? Yes, one. Okay, one. Okay. Do you know it's is it at large or is it a board or? I don't recall. Okay. I know that they're looking right now. Um, okay. They're hoping to have one soon. Okay. Last day. Right? <coughs> I move to approve the Moorhead Human Rights Commission annual report for 2018. One amendment. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, the um, Morad Human Rights Commission annual report for 2018 with the one amendment is, um, is approved. Next item is consider and finalize annual plan. Did you, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at this at all. Were we, did we talk last time about doing another um, survey? Were we gonna do that? The internal survey among uh, commissioners? Yeah. Uh, we touched on that briefly, but I don't recall if we were moving forward with that or okay. what do you want it done with that? I think it'd be a good idea just to see what everybody's thoughts and ideas are. I think that's how we kind of came up with this plan last right. time. Um, so maybe push this down the road and just. Right. I mean, you could probably just look at, what, I don't know if you have that. Do you have that survey? Do you have I've got some things. Okay. So I'll, I can take a look and see what was done last year. Yeah. I think maybe we should do that. I think that's kind of what um, mm -hmm. they'd use to put this plan together. Just make sure everybody's still focused on the same, same things. Mm -hmm. I also wonder where we have like guest speakers on here. I wonder if we should. I just when I saw this annual report, I wonder if we should touch base with the welcoming week committee and have them maybe come in again um, and just kind of share information. I don't know where they're at with it, but they, I see they were here in January, so they're probably already on a roll mm -hmm. over there. I feel like we we were going to work and do something and then it kind of all fell apart. We never really did do much. I went to all the meetings, but I feel like we could have done more. It kind of just. I'm going to reach out and see if we can get somebody yeah. at the next meeting to just yeah. 
I don't discuss know what Cara, they're planning. I don't know if she's, I know she was gone for a while. I don't know if she's back yet or not. Who was that? Uh, Kara or Cassie. They both came that one time. I will reach out to them and see if there's someone available or yeah. for next month. That'd be great. So we're gonna push out the reviewing the plan. And I will send out, I'll find what's whatever survey was done last time and send that out. Okay. When do we have to have that done? I'm not sure if there's a I'm not sure if there's a deadline for the annual plan or not. 2019 plan? Yes. It says December on this little calendar. Yeah, this was the plan that was put together in 2018, and last month. Uh, the, just revised it. Yeah, right? was asked to just update it for, with 19, yep. Yep. run some additional so information. So it looks like, I mean, it's not like we have to have it approved and presented to the council next month or something. So we've got a little bit of time. Right. Okay. I believe last year, Daniel. Um, plan dent or it was in June. Yeah. It was still being discussed in like May and June, I believe. Right. And then we had some employee changeover. Mm -hmm. kind of mm. yeah. so. Next year, that's why we, we've got it on the schedule. So, right. Or I should say later this year, we can start earlier. Um, all right. So we don't have to do that. We do that. And are there any member reports or announcements? Or upcoming events. This is where Sarah always had something. <laughs> you, I yes, I should have. I do have things, but there, yeah. Uh. <laughs> um, what did we send out a thing about the United Way of that poverty simulation? I can't remember if we sent an email out with that. People could volunteer to do that. I think after the last one, we did, did internally, yeah. 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 I do, I'm going to look up an event that I have. I know. I just have to. I know it's Pride Celebration, Winter Pride in town. I don't know what all the events are, but I think it starts today. What is today? 20? Yeah, I think it, well, actually, I think it started yesterday and goes through the 22nd. So they've got lots of little events going around town, so you can check that out. Um, there is, okay, I will open this up. Um, coming up this week, as soon as my thing. opening slowly I'll be better prepared uh, next time so this will be at the Yemcom so the Herit the Historical and Cultural Society of Clay County is sponsoring an event um, and it's this Saturday February 23rd at 3 o'clock and it's a talk called remembering African Americans in the Midwest and the speaker it's a free lecture by dr. Crystal M Moten and they do ask that you reserve seats online. Online through the... Yep. They're through the... Yes. Yep. So they have information about it on their um, Facebook page um, as well as on their web page. Perfect. Yeah. And I'll make sure I have more... I'll, I'll be better prepared next time. I should have sent you a note. Yes. <laughs> I was always great at having a list of things. Yeah. Well, the other thing that I'll mention is that um, one of the other hats I wear is I coordinate a public leadership program for women, and we focus on building leadership among women from traditionally underrepresented communities. And so we're currently accepting applications, but it's about um, public leadership, but really about how you can create positive change in your community, and uh, it's for adult women uh, throughout the region. So any, they can contact me if they want any more information about it. 
else? Let me get a motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thanks.